do you think that there's a specific agenda being pushed to make black women look a certain way in a, you know, and in a certain light? And an example is Woman King. In uh, my opinion, I feel like that they portrayed the women as very masculine. Wanted to know your opinion of that. Do you agree? Yes. Uh, part of this agenda to homosexualize and lesbianize and transgenderize our children is to distort the images of black men and black women. They basically want us to trade places. They want the man to be effeminate and they want the woman to be masculine. They want the woman to lead because the white man is not threatened by the black woman. He's threatened by the black man. So they would much rather have the woman in charge because they can't control her. And if they can get the woman to participate in the, emascul the emasculation of the black man, then that's all the more better. I don't like the roles that I see black women in. I believe black women are the only women in this country who have been victimized by femininity. And what I mean by that is the black woman has been stripped of her femininity. The black woman is the only woman in this country who has to be tough. You're the only woman who's expected to be masculine. You're the only woman who is expected to not yield or humble herself in the presence of her husband. You're the only woman who's expected to be strong all the time as if you are some kind of a superhero. You are never allowed to be vulnerable at all. And you know who helps to reinforce this racist narrative about the black woman being basically a brute, a softer version of a man? Black women do it. I see it all the time. Black women reinforce this narrative that y'all have to be macho. If, 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 if a black woman starts crying, a lot of black women will condemn her for crying. If a black woman says, I want a husband, I'm tired of being by myself, other black women will call her weak. If a black woman says, I need a man to help me take care of these children, another black woman will say, what you crying and complaining about? You don't need no man. I'm the mother and the father for my child. And my mom raised all of us all by herself. You women, our women are not allowed to be vulnerable. You're not allowed to be weak. You're not allowed to ask for help. You have been victimized by your spirituality and you have been stripped of your femininity and somehow in being victimized by your spirituality and stripped of your femininity, a lot of black women have come to see this as something strong and powerful. And they fail to recognize that this is an exploitation of who you are and they are using it to dehumanize and masculinize you. The black woman must take back her God-given right to be feminine. Not only are you feminine, you are the mothers of femininity. You are the living, breathing manifestation of divine feminine essence. But you have to take it back and stop trying to live up to the Superman roles, you understand, where you are impervious to pain, impervious to sadness, impervious to disappointment, and impervious to needing somebody to talk to. And as a result of this victimization of Black women by the stripping of their femininity and the weaponization of spirituality, I'm seeing Black women have nervous breakdowns. I've never seen it before. I'm seeing record numbers of Black women ending up as alcoholics and chain smokers and hard drug users. You know why? Because black women are not allowed to be vulnerable and they ain't got nobody to talk to. The black woman is lonelier than the black man. The black woman is lonelier than the black man. And I'm gonna tell you why I say that coming from a therapist's perspective. Black men, we got our issues. Lord knows we killing each other on the streets every day. So everybody knows the black man has issues. But let me tell you this. If I need to talk to a brother about a problem, I'll roll up to a brother and talk to him about a problem. Black women is not so easy. Black women are so in competition with each other. So in competition with each other that loneliness as a black woman is much more intense and much more pervasive than it is as loneliness for a black man. I'll give you an example. As someone who works without children, if I need men to help me with boys, I'm going to find them. No doubt. I'm going to find them. No issue at all getting black men to spend time with black boys. But let me try to get some black women. 
to spend time with black girls. And you know what some of them going to say before they even see the girls. I'm not I'm not working with a no little smart, fresh ass, hot in the pants woman. Titties bigger than mine, ass bigger than mine, thinking she's going to talk to me any kind of way she wants. These women too grown, these little girls too grown. They think they grown as you. You ain't even met them yet. And maybe if you spent some time with them, they wouldn't carry themselves like that. Black women have a self-hate thing for each other that in many ways is worse than what we as black men have. And, and, and at a time like this, black women need to find each other because black women ain't got nowhere to go. Where can a black woman go if she needs to talk to somebody? Can't go to church. They want to turn you into a Muslim or a Christian. You're not looking for that. You're just looking for somebody to talk to. Can't go to the community-based organizations. They ain't got nothing for you. Can't go to your fraternities and sororities because even though y'all brothers and sisters, y'all ain't that tight. Black women ain't got nobody to turn to, not even their own mothers, because so many black women have been emotionally and psychologically abused by their own mothers. And so black women are out here. Why do you think we got so many teenage pregnant girls? It ain't because of sex. They lonely. They want somebody to care about them. That's what this is about. Why so many black women get sexually assaulted? They wasn't looking for sex. They just want somebody to care about them. Black women needs to start. Y'all need to start forming healing circles for black women. Because there's a lot of sisters out here who can benefit from a safe, healthy place to go and just talk about their life. Why do people pay for therapists? Why do people pay a stranger to talk about their problems? You know why people pay a stranger to talk about their problems? It's three reasons. Number one, you pay them to keep your business to themselves. That's a big problem with black women. Y'all talk too damn much. I'm just going to say it. I know some of the sisters in the chat don't want to hear it, but I'm going to be honest and y'all know it's true. Y'all talk too damn much. When a girlfriend tells you her personal business, you have no right to go home and share it with your man. But that's exactly what y'all do. That girl just exposed her heart to you about her sex abuse or molestation or pedophilia or whatever she'd been through. And she trusted you to keep it to yourself. And instead of keeping it to yourself, you went home and told it to your damn boyfriend who went and told it to his friends. And now her business is all out in the streets. That's why people go to therapists, because we are sworn by law and ethics to keep what you tell us to ourselves. Second reason we go to therapy is we want somebody to listen to us without judging us. That's right, without persecuting us. All you need to get over, all you weak, all you, you didn't sin, all you didn't broke God's commandments. You not who your father was, you not who your mother was. Listen, we all fall short. We all make mistakes. Ain't none of us on this planet who is not a living contradiction. We are a work in progress. We are born to be works in progress. If you want to talk to somebody about the problems you have, why the hell would you talk to somebody who ain't going to do nothing but judge you and condemn you the entire time that you're telling your narrative? That's the second reason, to not be judged and condemned. And the third reason people go to therapy is to get some honest advice that is not colored by personal agenda. What do I mean? You a black woman, you talking to your girlfriend about your husband, but she got a secret crush on your husband. She's telling you to break up with him. Girl, he ain't no good. If he cheated on me, I'll leave him. You weak, you bad, you this, and you end up leaving him. And guess what? Six months later, guess who's sleeping with your ex-husband? Your damn girlfriend. Her advice was colored by a personal agenda. And that's why people go to therapy. That's why people would rather talk to a stranger than a cousin, an aunt, a parent, a next door neighbor, a best friend, a frat, a soror, because they can't get confidentiality with us. They can't get a safe space without being judged. And they can't get somebody to give them some honest advice that's not being colored by their own personal selfish agenda. Mm, that's powerful, brother.